yeah, for see, first you gotta swim with, with, with ways that turn them on to making them wanna get up out of there. He only in there to eat. Yeah. First of all. Yeah. He only there to eat. Yeah. Damn. So if you That's can control if you can control that to make him control it, then there you go. We talked we talked about the norms earlier. Yeah, go ahead. You change them. When you change them, you change self. In the neighborhood, I, mean, I was only there to eat. No doubt. So, I, you know, I did whatever it took inside of there, whatever it took inside of there to, to, to meet my core. Brother Thomas, thank you so much for gracing us with your appearance, man. It's, I mean, grateful. Uh, you expanded our nation beyond belief. It's just a wonderful thing. And we would like to present you with the self love show first annual Ernest Lee Thomas Achievement Award. Oh man, it's oh, apropos that you man, are the first recipient. And, and nope, and nope, we call it the Raj. We're gonna call it the Raj. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh man, that ain't even for the airways. But the point that I'm making is that see, my dad made me in a way that I'm comfortable. I'm super mm -hmm. comfortable with, with everything. And mm -hmm. so that probably comes out. So that allows me to bond, not just with like-minded thinking, but but with everyone. Because I don't see the surface, I see the true bond. So, so your favorite DJ money, to summarize it, is who? And we can Nate do our King and, Nate King and Mark Roussey. They're equal. All right, uh, we're gonna ask the same question to DD. Favorite um, house DJ? That's hard because, like, like I said, I'm the baby of the crew. So, like, I got introduced to disco at 13 and like '93. So, money them were already doing their thing. So, I used to go to stuff and like when house and disco was like underground, you could still find like yeah. dope. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it could be the average DJ that yeah. nobody really knows and just banging this. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I guess, Dee Dee, I guess what he's saying is, it, for them to understand, I guess, would you say Craig and Rush were the big ones in the 90s? Uh, yes. Yes. How have you used your South Side upbringing to, to propel you um, in your teaching? It, it helps me relate to uh, the youth of today, uh, the youth of uh, some other uh, generations, uh, when I was a director of a youth center on 76 and Phillips, um, it was during the migration of, of the project. So um, some of the uh, kids coming from, from the projects on State Street, they transitioned to uh, living in South Shore. And so they were coming, South Shore was, was, was made up of the molds. And so I'm on 76 and Phillips working there. These, these were the molds, so they were bringing the GDs. And so that was some conflict amongst a lot of these guys uh, coming from the projects, coming over to the South Shore community. And um, I told the guys coming from the projects, I'm like, I know you. I was saying a lot buddies with your uncles and your cousins. And, um, you know, I started dropping some names and they went back and did some history on me. So this gave me some street cred to make sure that they were willing to listen to me. My daughter is like my princess. No. And, you know, it's it's amazing the whole you know African American culture is just a it's, it's just a it's just an interesting culture. Um, we all come from I, and I don't know because we have this big melting pot you know somewhere in our ancestry, ancestry all of us may have this character trait that you know we all act a little bit different you know and and but but at the crust of it you know there's a lot of commonality and love is that commonality. You know, our black women love to be loved, and they love to, to let them know that we love them. They, they love touch. But I do remember, I do remember when things began to change, where, where it, it, and I didn't understand it at the time. I just thought people grew up and moved. But I, it was it was when crack, the act, crack epidemic flooded the entire um, city. So it wasn't just like the low income, residences and the low-income communities or the poverty um, filled areas. It was the blocks. And that had more of an impact in my memory than the gunshots. Um, I, I have to admit. Now, I will say I heard them just like we all did, but it wasn't like 
it wasn't like how it was in some of my friends community. and i find that you get further in life you know through respect and love than nonsense yo that right there that's a gem that's a gem right there that's the truth i've lived it i've seen it and uh, i can't refute you absolutely right 100%. So what can black men do to protect black women from being murdered, kidnapped, and I'm sure you know you, you know these stats, and trafficked, um, sex trafficked at a pace that's compared to any other race? In my situation, understanding divine order and understanding who is your protector so that you don't step underneath from underneath the protection. Uh, I can't save the world. All the, uh, there's a lot of things going on. There's people getting raped, and you know, there's a lot of you know stuff happening with with, with children and so on and so forth. You just gotta be, you know, your spiritual eyes gotta be open, and somebody gotta be able to teach you the do's and don'ts. And when you're putting yourself in harm's way, it's a home-based thing. Teach your daughters to be respectful. Teach your daughters to demand respect in the way they carry themselves, not to demand respect with a with a neck swag and mouth but in the way you carry yourself. And if something happens, we gonna show up like with the cavalry anyway, but let's prevent that from happening. Yeah, well, what we were talking about, we were talking about like black on black crime. And I was saying how it was fairly um, in this infant stage still, you know what I mean? Because I was around in the eighties when it was, it was rough, but everybody was still a community. You know what I mean? Like, yes, sir. I knew all of my friends' mother, you know what I'm saying? I knew a good helping of the fathers was still there, you know what I'm saying? A lot of them wasn't, but a lot of them was. So it was like 50-50, you know what I mean? Yes, That's sir. when prison had started coming in. So a lot of them was going to prison or some of them had passed away or some of them was just gone, you know what I'm saying? But we were still a whole community, you know what I mean? Facts, facts. I knew yeah. the grandmother over here, she knew my mama. I do not to be cussing in front of her. I had to help her with her groceries mm. if I seen her, you know what I mean? I wasn't trying to rob her. Crackhead just came in, so nobody really wasn't doing that. Neither. Actually, I, I could talk about like the concept of uh, our expansion of self. The, the concept of self is that you know we're all part of each other. You know, what I mean, and we're all cells of the great creator. Mm -hmm. As we are made up of all the cells that we are, all of us are cells of that, and we are here to expand we fake separateness for to gain a greater scope of knowledge and be able to expand and grow black women are individual in in our being in our nature as any woman of any other race and any effort to try to categorize us is futile when mm. in fact we're going to be who we are now you know, I understand people um, kind of feeling some kind of way towards us because, you know, we are, we are um, strong. We are enduring. We have uh, unbridled strength and emotion and physical and, um, so that, that bothers people, how we can smile, even though we may be crying deep. What kind of car you gonna get, baby? Oh, one of them big old butt It's down the avenue and stop. I wanna ask you uh, this though, as a silverback, as a big homie, um, we call silverback gorilla because we want our silverback. What right. advice would you give to a little homie? What I would tell them is that, that they read, um, basketball player, football player, actor, whatever it is, whoever that guy is that you aspire to be like. You might not want to be that person, but who you aspire to be like. Take a step back and look at himself. Is that dude doing anything wrong that's going to mess up his position whether he is not? And if you just don't want to deal with it, say pass. And the idea is to say the first thing that comes to your mind. You got the instructions? Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. It's called the 9 at 9 self-love show. Right. Soda pop or Kool-Aid? Kool-Aid. NBA Live or NBA 2K? NBA 2K. LeBron James or Michael Jeffrey Jordan? Jeffrey Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> um, Michael Jordan just because he had a better jump shot. Than... 
LeBron. Smart, smart kid, really smart. <laughs> Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or Malcolm X? Yes. <laughs> Drake or Lil Durk? Lil Durk. Drill means a chat town in the building. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Christopher Columbus or George Washington? George Washington. Pass. Mom says pass. <laughs> you, know, you guys have some talking to do over there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in short, man, because again, I want them to buy the book. Uh, it's about self determination and the fact that we've literally been socialized, indoctrinated, bamboozled. Um, into buying into the idea of being in debt, which is basically being controlled by banks and controlled by the federal government, or having a job or needing a job, requiring a job in order to get access, to gain access to our basic needs. Um, I look at the homeless people that literally 100 yards from my building, um, and it's absolutely ridiculous. It's the only thing that keeps them from being able to eat is some fake fiat currency, which is literally something that was concocted up by this government uh, with a, a small cabal of white men um, and decided that these people are going to be able to eat. These people are not going to be able to eat. And it's all based on mm -hmm. basically your access to fiat currency, which basically you're able to acquire through basically contractually agreeing to being in debt or having a job where somebody controls, you know, whether you're able to have access to these things. I mean, that's literally nonsense. It's literally like agreeing to go into a hamster cage and live in it for the rest of your life. You know what the difference is between the AIDS, pan the AIDS pandemic or the AIDS situation and now lack of leadership. That's what the difference is. You had, you had a whole series of folks coming out saying, this is nothing, don't worry about it. You know, I don't need to revisit the, the, the rhetoric, but that's the difference. And there was a respect for science, even though the strange things, thing is, even though AIDS as an HIV affected sort of a non glamorous demographic, right? Right. Mm -hmm. were, the people were allowed to digest the science of it. Would well, y'all also feel like overexposure uh, to to avenues, man? Uh, I mean, WebMD got you dying from cancer every time you look up a diagnosis. We're telling our story. So just look at it in, in a nutshell, Chanel, that, um, you know, conceivably your kids 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 can watch this mm -hmm. and, and and hear the words from your mouth i was born and raised in oakland california i'm repping today i got my shirt on you know the town you know go Big go up. one of the most one of the most beautiful things i think about growing up in the bay area is that um you know everybody's culture is embraced you know, everybody's culture is respected. I, I studied Swahili in high school. I, I studied black authors um, in high school. You know, um, the people that would come, Stokely uh, Carmichael, you know, who was one of the Black Panthers, like came and spoke to, at my high school. You know, it was just, just such a beautiful thing um, as an African-American woman to be in an environment where there's just such a beautiful celebration of every color, you know, of the rainbow. So. Um, I won't say that life was always easy. You know, I lived, you know, in the lower bottom. Anybody who's familiar with the Bay Area, you know, West Side, Oakland, um, Acorn Project. Tory Words, Smith's final words. Look deep within and figure where to begin. And it starts where the lack of education ends. When I started to look, started to learn. This is your life. It better be your highest concern. Do you still have them?